On the deserted island, Daffy Duck and Speedy Gonzalez are preparing their lunch. Daffy is freaking out, he's had enough of these monotonous coconuts. He claims that if he spends another minute on this island, he'll drop dead. Well, it's a minute already, says Gonzalez. While Daffy is swimming, panicking, and running around like a headless chicken, <laughs> Gonzalez spots two ships and yells, Look, Daffy, two ships, two ships, we are safe! But Daffy mishears and thinks he's yelling, Two sheep! He's already imagining himself feasting on those sheep. Boy, like a lamb! <laughs> But it quickly becomes clear that these two ships are bombarding each other with cannons. Meanwhile, on the shore, Daffy and Gonzalez try to get their attention by waving a white cloth as a makeshift white flag. Bugs Bunny and Yosemite Sam continue to blast each other with cannons. Blast! And Sam is clearly losing. In desperation, he calls upon the Tasmanian devil for help and asks him to load his cannon, but something goes wrong. We're down here. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bugs manages to blow up their ship. Oh no! On the shore, Daffy and Gonzalez witness one ship exploding, and huge objects come flying out, with one of them landing right on Daffy's head. You squashed book? It turns out to be a chest in which Daffy finds a map. He realizes it's a treasure map and jumps for joy, shouting that he's rich. <laughs> I'm fabulously well here. I'm comfortably well off. Ecstatic, Daffy hands Gonzalez a shovel and demands that he dig up the entire island. Gonzalez obeys but worries that the treasure won't be his. Meanwhile, the Tasmanian devil and Sam float on a plank from their sunken ship to the shore and crash into it with all their might. <laughs> They find their chest, open it, and realize that the treasure map has vanished. Instead of a map, there lies a black feather in the chest. Sam realizes that the thief is wandering around in black feathers. Meanwhile, Daffy and Gonzalez are following the route indicated on the map, and Daffy ends up falling into a swamp. swamp. Sam sends the Tasmanian devil to search for the blackbird in the chicken coop, but he fails to find it. Daffy and Gonzalez stumble upon a spot marked with a black cross on the map, only to find a well instead of the promised treasure. Daffy declares that he doesn't want water, but would rather feast on a delectable piece of cheese. Lo and behold, a piece of cheese magically appears. The well starts speaking in a human voice, informing them that if they desire cheese, they shall have it. Your fondest wish, your fondest dream. Daffy realizes that this is no ordinary well, but a magical well. He boldly requests the well to transform him into to a magical duck so he can fly away from this wretched island. I'll make you Super Duck Supreme! And just like that, the well turns him into a super duck, stronger than any superhero. <laughs> Disguised as a newspaper reporter, Daffy is just so thrilled that he's been transformed from a super duck into a stupor duck. Call that super duck? You made me a stupid duck! And, of course, the well responds with its infinite wisdom, telling him to be patient. Meanwhile, our oh so lucky reporter overhears a conversation in the editor's office. Boom! Powie! Sam! Kaboom! All over country! About a ginormous terrorist attack. So, Daffy decides to ditch his simple reporter disguise. He quickly changes into a witch costume and takes off, but, oh dear, something doesn't feel right, so, he switches gears and puts on a Superman suit. <laughs> Meanwhile, the editor finally decides to tear himself away from his riveting television show. Suddenly, Daffy bursts into the editor's office, convinced that a bandit has made a daring escape through the window. He clumsily launches himself out the window. <laughs> only to witness the collapse of some random structure. Daffy immediately jumps to the conclusion that terrorists are behind this, grabs the falling building, and miraculously puts it back in its place. As it turns out, the building was scheduled for demolition and was meant to fall. For his heroic efforts, Daffy is rewarded with a hefty blow to the head from a burly stranger. The lights went out. Clearly, Daffy is not pleased with the fact that he's just a dim-witted superhero duck. Suddenly, he spots a ship sinking. A super duck! He grabs the ship and hauls it to the surface. All right. Apparently, it was a submarine. <laughs> Mother. Then, he witnesses someone attempting to blow up a colossal bridge. Without hesitation, Daffy flies towards the explosives, detonating them in a spectacular display. 
I'll just relieve you of that. It turns out to be a film crew shooting some random movie. Suddenly, he spots a ginormous rocket. Oh no, I won't let you explode. He says as he takes off with the rocket. <laughs> Listen up, you dumb well. I'm stuck on this island, so at least make it pretty. And just like that, the well obeys his command, transforming the island into a breathtaking paradise with lush green gardens and magnificent palaces. Daffy exclaims, well, with such beauty and wealth on this island, I'll surely figure out how to make money. He decides to exploit the well and make a fortune out of it. His plan is to charge $500 for each wish granted. Daffy almost tosses away the map, thinking it's useless, but the well warns him that it only fulfills wishes for the one who possesses the map. Daffy then names the island Daffy Duck's fantastically fabulous island. What else but Daffy Duck's fantastic island? Soon enough, the first plane arrives on the island, and Daffy and Gonzalez welcome their first guests. Hospitality! Daffy sells a coin for $500 to Grammy, who eagerly buys it to make her wish come true. She approaches the well and expresses her long-held desire to alleviate the suffering of the sick and become a nurse. The well promises to fulfill her wish, and Grammy becomes a nurse at an animal hospital. Meanwhile, Tweety appears, being chased by Sylvester and Spike, and an unfortunate accident occurs. <laughs> The nurse, peering out the window at this spectacle, is overjoyed that today she will have not just one, but a whopping three patients. Grammy diligently tends to the sick, protecting little Tweety from Sylvester and Spike. The poor little Tweety bird. Let's make you a little more comfortable. However, in the nurse's absence, the cat tries to get to the little birdie. <laughs> <laughs> Grammy suspects foul play and enters the room. Most likely, she thought to herself, My, I must be hearing things. Sylvester once again sneaks up on Tweety, but fear not, Granny comes to the rescue. She tucks Sylvester back into bed and gives him a sedative. When the pill starts to take effect, Spike whacks Sylvester with a massive club and calmly goes to sleep. <laughs> But that doesn't stop the cat, as he once again attempts to approach little Tweety. However, at that moment, the nurse's voice is heard as she enters the room and sees that Tweety is not in the cage, but yellow feathers are spewing out of Sylvester's mouth. The nurse grabs Sylvester and rushes him to the x-ray room, where the image reveals that Sylvester swallowed Tweety. She performs surgery and extracts the poor thing. Bad old putty cat and Tweety finds himself back in the cage. Sylvester and Spike continue to fight, beating each other with clubs. <laughs> and the nurse decides to tie these troublemakers to their beds so they won't interfere with each other's treatment. Why don't you get a hobby like the pussycat? Sylvester made something really weird. You won't believe what he had in mind. He created a special thing to bother dogs by poking through their bandages. The clever inventor drilled a hole, put dynamite inside, and sealed it up. But guess what? It didn't work. Spike, the dog, switched their bandages, and Sylvester's plan backfired. Right then, a nurse came in and said they were all healthy and could leave the hospital. Looking out the window, the nurse saw the three friends running and, oops, they got hit by a car, just like other patients she mixed up. She then put them in a stroller and warned them about playing outside, even though they didn't have any paws left to play with.